The moment I saw this knife, my first impression was that the designer was trying pretty hard to stand out. Frankly, it reminded me of an earlier Jason Browse design. It kind of has this poisonous tactical look and feel to it, which I've noticed seems to be a look that many are drawn to, but especially younger or even newer knife guys. Then I found out that this knife was designed by a 12-year-old kid named Ben Chacon. I was absolutely floored. I have to say he did a pretty damn good job. From what I understand, this kid was inspired by watching YouTube videos, specifically Gavco knife making videos. Ben would call Elliot Williamson, who is a co-owner of Ferrum Forge, and ask pretty advanced questions about knife making. Being impressed with this, Elliot brought him to the shop, which was the initial step toward the collaboration between Ferrum Forge and what is now Toxic Knives. The result of which is what we're going to talk about today. The Kylan is a unique custom flipper in which there are a total of 28 of them made, 25 of which are serialized, and as you can see, this one is number 12. The other three are even more special. As cool as all of this is, I feel it is incumbent that I call it exactly as I see it. I consider any knife over $500 to be in the big league, so to speak, and as such, anything shy of perfection is going to be critiqued just out of general principle. That being said, let's take off here. We'll start with the blade, which has this unique and darker stonewash appearance to it and adds to the abundance of character that this knife already exhibits. Although shallow, it feels to be a hollow ground one cliff design, which yields that tougher look that Ben was obviously going for. Speaking of grind, notice how the grind line kind of drifts off and curves into the plunge. I was wondering what the thought process was here because it results in a very obtuse edge toward the aft portion of the blade because the grind is too thick behind the edge there. I spoke with the owner of Ferrum Forge, Elliot Williamson, and he made it clear by reminding me that it was ground by a then 13 year old kid, and I quote, was trying to get fancy with his plunges back then instead of concentrating on usable and maintainable edges. The one cliff blade looks to I have a very strong yet relatively precise tip, which is a prerequisite for my carry knives. The spine is made of 0.17 inch or 4.3 millimeter stock, so it is pretty beefy for a folding knife. The steel is N690, which is made by Bowler and is nice because of its very fine grain structure that results in taking a nice fine edge. Edge retention is normally good, but not fantastic. It could be compared to 440C with added cobalt and vanadium, which I've always regarded as a mid-grade steel. Perhaps 154CM or maybe even VG10 would be a more appropriate analogy. The beauty of this steel is how easy and rewarding it is to sharpen. You can get one hell of an edge with little work, but on the flip side it may not retain it as well as some of the higher end steels. I suppose it's a very safe bet for makers that are trying to maximize quality control and profit margins. If they wanted to stay with Bowler, I really would have liked to see them step up to a powder metal like LMAX or M390, but I personally think that something like ZDP 189 or maybe a Super Blue would be absolutely perfect for this knife. The bluish tint of the Super Blue would be awesome here, but then again perhaps these stills are too hard and brittle for uh, the maker's preference, as it seems that toughness may have been a factor here. On the other hand, they hardened their N690 between 60 and 61 on the Rockwell scale, which is relatively hard, and if I learned anything testing knives, I'd rather have a mundane steel with a fantastic heat treatment than a higher end steel with a shitty one. The choil is not big enough to be functional, so I'm just going to call it a glorified Ricasso with flair. Frankly, the edge is so obtuse here that I suppose you could put your finger there if you really wanted to. Up top, there is some jimping with mild traction. As a result of not having a functional choil, I personally would not use it, but it is there if you know, you'd like to. It is a titanium frame lock or a Reeves integral lock to give credit where credit is due. I've said before I really like this locking system. It's just classy and very becoming, especially on a knife like this one. This features a hoback detent. Basically, it's a detent with a roller bearing that can be adjusted to your desired tension. This is really quite nice as you can dial it into your exact preference. Also, as the knife wears, adjustments may be necessary. 
One drawback is that it is somewhat exposed when in the open position, which leaves it vulnerable to dirt and debris that can hem it up. In fact, this was the case when I received it. Also, there is this removable plate that prevents overflexing of the lock bar. One thing I noticed though is if you grip the pocket clip while deploying the knife, it can put additional pressure on the blade which creates resistance and can make it tougher to deploy. The action was somewhat gritty out of box, but then again, uh, this one had some use before it even made it here. It was just kind of gritty and scratchy feeling. Once I got in there and polished and removed the burrs and cleaned everything out, it smoothed out considerably. The blade is riding on caged ceramic thrust bearings on each side. I'm not exactly sure where the ceramic comes in, but this is what Elliot called them. The top scale is milled titanium with this kind of dragon scale look. I've been on a Skyrim kick as of late, and that was kind of the first thing that came to mind. I'll admit that I'm generally a fan of simpler and more innocuous designs, but uh, this is kind of cool visually, but more importantly, it adds function in, a way, in the way of mild traction. I really like the highlights on the ridges uh, of the knife here. I noticed that the hardware was not affected by the magnet in my screw cup during disassembly, which confirmed that it is a non-ferrous metal. Since it is anodized to this sort of brass color, I assume that it too was titanium. Elliot uh, confirmed that it was indeed titani titanium hardware. The screws look really cool. They look as if they were thermally oxidized, as there is almost a like purple hues in the brass color. As you can see, the pivot screw has sort of a stippled brass look to it, and it really ties the front of the knife together very nicely. It's just a nice touch that works very well. The pocket clip is also milled titanium. It was designed specifically for right hand tip up carry only, so this is not an amb ambidextrous knife. The clip tension is pretty weak, which would prohibit me from carrying this knife as it would be sickening to lose a knife this rare and in this price range. However, there are three torque screws that hold it in place from the back side of the titanium. The problem is that the knife needs to be disassembled in order to access them. Not to mention, this is not the type of clip that you tweak, but nor should you have to as far as I'm concerned. So in short, the clip has a neat design, but functionally it is a miss for me. You can see the single gold standoff there, which looks nice. The centering is good and the lockup is about as tight as I've ever seen on a folding knife. There is zero movement in any direction. The knife comes complete with this nice hard case by Fair and Forge, which has a hard tag that has, you know, insignias and, you know, kind of a label sort of thing. All in all, the fit and finish is very solid and well done. There's some design features that kind of leave me scratching my head, wondering how they made it from the concept of a 12-year-old kid to production. I'll admit that I don't know a lot about the custom world, so I can only assume that some of these attributes are sort of a snapshot in time of a rough design from a 12-year-old that came to fruition. Perhaps there's a certain amount of charm that comes from having the first piece in the progression of a protege. I could see this knife being worth a ton if this kid continues to grow in this industry. In short, there's a couple kinds of, of cool. There's a the kind that the function and design is just so well done that it's just cool. Then you have the kind of cool that you can't really put your finger on. It's like the sound of a Ferrari at the brink of redlining before second gear or you know, the percussion you feel in your chest for a split second the moment you shoot a binary explosive with your AR-15. The knife is in the latter category for me. The question is, what would you be willing to pay for it, assuming you could get one? Anyway, there it is, guys. There's a, a quick look at uh, the Kylan, which is a um, collaboration between Ferrum Forge and uh, Toxic Knives. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for um, all your support. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave your mark in the comment section. Until next time, this is Chase Pelagi, signing off.